Amen. Let's turn, if we would, again to 271. 271. I'm standing on the promises of God. 271. All together now. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing on the promises of God. On that third, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. My Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys very much. Sister Celise, that was a beautiful offertory. Who taught you that, your mom or your dad? With a big smile, neither. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to have talented children? They make us look so good, amen. That was one of the things I learned when we were missionaries on the Yacht Chin. Never go on deputation if you can help it without your family. They always make you look good, amen. They always do. Is that true, brother? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Let's turn in our Bibles tonight to Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Now, this psalm is a little bit longer, but this is a pretty spiritual crowd. Didn't even get one amen. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and read it. How about that? Is that okay? Is that okay? This psalm may not be as popular as some psalms are, but I'll tell you what, you just grab a hold of some of this scripture tonight for sure. Psalm 102, hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thy ear unto me. In the day when I call, answer me speedily. How about that? For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as a hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Mine enemies reproach me all the day, and they are mad against me. And they that are mad against me are sworn against me. For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping because of mine indignation 
and thy wrath, for thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. He shall be, this shall be written for the generation to come and the people which shall be uh, created shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth. To How about, listen to this. Here you go, Brother Jaime. To hear the groaning of the prisoner. To loose that, to loose those that are appointed to death. How about that? To declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the people are gathered together and the kingdom to serve the Lord. He weakened my strength in the day. He shortened my days. I said, oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. The children of thy servants shall continue and their seed shall be established before thee. Father, we do thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for already, Holy Spirit of God, how you're pricking our heart and allowing for us to just stop and pause and truly appreciate this wonderful relationship that we have with you, that on this side of eternity, we can in a one-on-one -on -one way, talk to you directly. No, no human individual needs to intercede for us to talk to you. We have this wonderful privilege of prayer. We are thankful for corporate prayer. We're thankful for public prayer. But Lord, we are also very mindful of how important it is to, to be focused on a regular daily prayer life, a, a private prayer life that will, that will move mountains. Speak to us tonight, Lord. Just have your way in the next few minutes that we have. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Private prayer. I am all for corporate prayer. I have been watching a whole lot of public prayers in the world of politics lately, and I, I kind of get a kick out of these less than, um, well, I'm not going to say less than sincere, but uh, I can, these, these pre-written prayers that they pray are usually to speak to certain constituents rather than speak to the Lord. I remember one time, actually, this is really true, I think I've already mentioned it before, there was one fellow who uh, came from church, some, you know, you know, was some preacher or whatever he was, 
and he had this prayer all written out, and he read his prayer in this public venue, and then he was asked to pray again, and he looked all perturbed. He said, I didn't prepare for that. <laughs> I haven't got a prayer written for that. So, you know what? We need to realize that prayer is, is you and I talking to the Lord. Amen? That's what prayer is. And prayer is listening. Prayer is listening to the Lord. So, you know, over the years, you've probably done studies where a real on-purpose, planned-out way of praying uh, has been introduced to you. And maybe for some of us, we follow something like, like, like what I'm about to look at very closely. You know, first of all, let me just say this. If I can't get anything else through to you tonight, beginning with me, no matter what you do, do this, pray, pray, pray. You got to know this. The real problem that we have is that we don't pray. We just don't pray. And so make sure you pray. If you'll notice on your notes, if you do have your notes, I usually have a few back there. Love it when they're all gone. Makes me feel good. <laughs> I wrote, a big truck stalled on the expressway, and a man stopped to help. Upon inquiring about the problem, he found that the truck's wheel bearings had frozen for lack of grease. Now, that's never happened to anybody here, but you probably have heard of people who have had that problem. What's so particular about that? The truck was an oil company truck. And it was hauling grease. How about that? You know, we, it, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like the mechanic who, whose car is always breaking down, you know? You know what I'm talking about? The things that we're equipped to do, the things that we are more than prepared to do, often we don't do. Just like a truck that's actually carrying wheel bearing grease, lacking the maintenance on that truck to, to grease their own wheel bearings, we do the same thing. Many of us in ministry are guilty, are so guilty of not recognizing the importance. Oh, we'll say all the right things and we'll, we'll encourage everybody else to do what, we're, what this preacher is about to say we ought to do. But we've got to be very careful that we, that we take seriously not only praying, but having a plan. You know, they're, 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 and I'm very careful about this because I, I, I don't want you to think that there's a wrong way to pray, but really there is. But the worst, the worst thing you can do is not pray at all. But if you allow for the scriptures to, to help you to learn how to pray more effectively, don't you think that would be a good plan? Isn't that a good idea for all of us? Don't you think that's something that we ought to do? And you know, those of you who, who believe the Lord has called you into ministry and let me just say that would include oh well every single one of you every single one of you every one of us that know Christ as our savior I believe we're called into ministry amen, amen. but some of us also know that some will serve in the capacity of a missionary or um, maybe pastor a church or, or be involved in evangelism and they'll be doing this uh, in a full-time way. Now, again, like I said, we know I, here in Maranatha, we've got a lot of servants, a lot of workers. They don't see themselves as part-time Christians. We don't believe in that, do we? We don't believe in that. Well, I can tell you this. The more you desire to be used by the Lord, the more you ought to appreciate, you better be in the business of taking seriously your prayer life for sure. So let's break it down a little bit. Some of these uh, you've heard before. And maybe for some of us, this will be kind of new for us. I'm all for just opening up 
your heart in praying, and you better pray. But, you know, there are some great ways to, to approach prayer. How about this? Number one, and this, this is so precious, adoration. Adoration. Today, my, my, I can always tell when my grandchildren are at the house because they like the doorbell. And they'll ring that doorbell. If I'm dead, that doorbell will be rung for the next 24 hours until somebody shows up. And so while they're out in front of my house ringing the doorbell, I, I'm actually, I, I was actually uh, in the bathroom, and so I wasn't there right away. And so what do you think the first thing they said to me was? It, do you think it was, hey, Grandpa, it's so sure good to see you, Grandpa. Hi, Grandpa. Hi, I love you, Grandpa. No, it was more like, we've been ringing this doorbell. Where have you been? What's, what's going on with you? Look, we're here. We're ringing the doorbell. What took you so long? So I... I wasted a little bit more time later on by trying to explain to them that you ought to say at least hi, Grandpa, before you, you know, do anything else. They're like, oh, yeah, great. But the real truth is, don't we go to the Lord in prayer that way? You know, we don't spend time glorifying God. We'll go right into our prayer list and, you know, we'll say a couple of little things maybe that we normally say all the time. How many of you are moved every time you read Isaiah chapter 6? Woe is me. I am undone. Oh, my. You know, when we recognize that we're stepping in the presence of a holy, omnipotent God who deserves, how about a moment of real praise and worship? We'll start off our prayer right. You know, stop and be conscious of the fact that you're talking to God. I mean, just settle down for just a moment, set everything else aside, and recognize, recognize how precious this is. I, you know what? This is more important than talking to Donald Trump. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is more important than, you know, talking to whoever you think of highly. You're having a conversation with the Lord. I mean, take it in. Spend some time. Uh, close your eyes and think about the fact that uh, your mighty God loves you so much that he wants to Take time for a personal, kind, merciful, gracious opportunity to interact with you in prayer. I mean, this is before you get anything out. Don't you? How many of us love the word studies that we can do on just the names of God found in the Bible? His attributes are so great that, you know what? They, all of who God is cannot be, cannot be found in just saying God only. Think about that. What is worship? It's to consider the worth of God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. And don't you love this part of the scripture? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Adore the Lord. Adoration. He's the only one who deserves adoration. Don't waste your time on man. Adore the Lord. Worship him. And with that said, this prepares for us our hearts as we continue in prayer. And here you go. Are you ready? Are you ready for this one? Confession. Confession. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 was written to Christians. Amen? Amen? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
every day, every day we need to be honest with the Lord. Uh, we need to confess, and you know what? We need to repent. That's something that we need to do. You know what? We also need to pray for strength to, to overcome the day's new temptations. You know, when, when we don't keep ourselves on a short rope, if you will, we just continue to let things linger and to let things fester and, and to have too much out there that's undone, not dealt with. You know and I know we're not praying the way we ought to if we continue in unconfessed sin. I mean, even if we're just talking about our hearts being right, amen? You know, pray like the psalmist in Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and, and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting, amen? I gotta tell you, that works. And, uh, you know, make it a habit to read Psalm 32 and Psalm 51 every once in a while. Amen? How about that? <laughs> if you can read through Psalm 51 and just walk away without a tear in your eye, maybe, well, let me just tell you this. Maybe you didn't really read it. We're not going to take a long time with this. And this is basic for us. But sometimes, you know what, we need to get back to those very basic, primo, uh, I don't know what word I was looking for, those very basic principles that work. Thirdly, how about this? Thanksgiving. I'll tell you what, Thanksgiving, that's not just the name of a holiday. It's much more, isn't it? We have so much to be thankful for. We have so much to give God thanks for. Our spouse, our children, our church, I would hope even our pastor, our health, the opportunity to serve the Lord. I, I still can't get over that. Can you? If you're not pinching yourself and still thanking the Lord that he would even use a knucklehead like me, I'll say that, okay? Then you're, you're missing. I mean, think about this. The Lord, once he saved your soul, he could have reached down and, and scooped you up out of here. But he chose for you to still be here for a reason. So much. So much to be thankful for. And you know what? We'll, we'll say all the right things. Oh, Lord, we thank you for all of our blessings. Well, do you really? You know, do you sing, count your blessings, name them one by one? You know what? You ought to do that. You know? Sometime when things don't seem to be going so well, do something like this. Take a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle, and on the left side, write the bad things that have happened to you. Okay, you may need a big piece of paper, okay? And you know what? On the right side, write the good things. And I guarantee you, when we stop dwelling on those few little things and start looking at all the other things that the Lord is doing, it, it brings things into perspective. Now, I run... In my circle, I know other pastor friends, and I have seen guys rob themselves of so many blessings because they're so preoccupied with maybe one or two or three people that they just know they're going to straighten out. They, they prepare their messages around them, you know. They do everything but name their name from the pulpit, and they're, they're obsessing and preoccupied about this little issue or that little thing. And they're robbed. They're missing all the other blessings of all the other things that are going on. You don't want to do that. You don't want to make that mistake. And we do that as fathers. We do that as, as husband and wife. We do that as parents. You know, take time to thank the Lord for his blessings. 
You say, well, preacher, you haven't even gotten into praying yet. Yes, I have. We start praying like this and watch what will happen. Watch how the Lord will ignite our prayer life if we'll do these things. You know what? Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And then here you go. Are you ready? Three letter or three and four syllable words. I only know a few, so let me see if I can try out a few. Supplication or intercession. James chapter 5 verse 16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Intercession should always follow confession and repentance. Only when we have confessed our own sins and experienced cleansing and dedicated ourselves afresh to, to do the will of God in our own lives can we really effectively pray for others. We call that getting on praying ground. Uh, it's fair to ask this question. Are you on praying ground? Is there some important work that you need to do? Do you think that the only time you need to be circumspect and examine, ask the Lord to show you anything that you need to see is when we break bread? You see, a, uh, take time. Here's some great scripture. You know these scriptures. Go back to them. Prayerfully read Romans chapter 9, those first few verses. Um, uh, Romans chapter 10, all of these scriptures, these are all powerful scriptures to help us when it comes to, to real, real positioning for intercessory prayer. You know what? Ask the Lord to, to make sure that you are being dead earnest about your prayers. You know, these shallow, mamby-pamby, weak prayers that we pray... We're pretty shocked when we see the Lord answer even them. But wouldn't it be wonderful if you knew people who would pray for you in a 100% earnest way? We've talked about this. The kind of guy that you're looking for when you're thinking, I really need prayer and I know who I'm asking. That's who we want to be. That's who we want to be. You know, I'll tell you. Anytime anything's ever happened that has drawn you closer to the Lord in prayer, let's say, let's say a family member who, who is very, very sick, possibly might even die. You, you, really, you really learned, you were schooled about how passionate you were about how you prayed for them. Would you do this every time you're moved to pray that way in whatever circumstance you find yourself in? Take a hold of that and now use that the next time somebody asks you to pray for them. Pray for their children the way you pray for your children. Pray for their marriage the way you pray for your marriage. Pray for their family, their circumstance. I mean, watch what the Lord will do. This one happened to me. <laughs> I was going to say, I got old. I, we all know that. We just found that. You know, Sunday was my birthday. Now I'm just old. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> Brother Jaime, you better. You're older than me. <clears throat> anyway, the real truth is, and I love what someone said. He's not with us anymore, but he said, getting old isn't for wimps. Amen. <laughs> hey, there have been times when I would pray for somebody who was sick, especially when I was much, much younger. And I go, yeah, I'll pray for you. And I thought, Psh, eh. How many have ever been very, 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 very sick? Did it change the way you prayed for others when they were sick? It should. And it does, doesn't it? That's what we're talking about. And then finally, notice petition. I remember years ago, Southern Baptists used to have this hand and it had the, you know, it had all of these different prayer, it had all of these things that we're talking about all lined out there for us. Petition. Luke eleven nine, Jesus asked, 
Ask and it shall be, actually he said, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. How many believe that's true? How many believe that's true? It is true. We know it is. Bring your needs before him. I'm convinced that if, if we adore him, confess our sins to him, thank him for his blessings and intercede on behalf of others, as well as bring our needs to him, we will pray with Jesus. How did he pray? Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. That's what the Lord wants to do. You know, today's been a day filled with a lot of counseling. That's kind of a fancy way for us pastors to say one brother got to encourage another brother or sister. And I can't even imagine what it would be like to try to be an encouragement or a blessing or a help to anyone else if, if I didn't recognize the importance of prayer and my hope and my desire is you'll pray for me that I'll be even more mindful of the importance of prayer because you really all need to be reminded of this the the the, the highest the, the the most the most important thing that I can do well the two most important things that I can do is preach and pray and I think for all of us, the two most important things we can do is be a witness and pray. Take time every day to pray. Father, we do thank you even now as we get ready to pray even more. Might we take some of what we've talked about in our private prayer and include it tonight in, in our corporate prayer. Have your way with us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.